radio astronomy and space research, or have I got that right? And all, he's also a member of the society and a keen violinist, so thanks very much. <laughs> thanks very much. <laughs> Radio astronomy, radio telescope, the same technique, 
and in terms of octaves, octave two times, right? Uh, those who deal with uh, uh, computers know that 1024 is 2 to the power of 10, so it is 10 octaves. And here in Radio Sermon we talked about uh, 10 to the power of 4, not 3, so it is um, uh, like 10 to the power of 13 octaves. So it's uh, a little bit bigger than this. <laughs> or maybe I, I should compare it with an orchestra. So it's extremely low and extremely high. No, so that's right. <laughs> and uh, here is just picture of East Asian uh, area with radio telescopes, um, an array of telescopes, and you can see many, many telescopes of size of 20, 30 meter, 40 meter, 500 meter fast, 40 meter, and a new radio telescope here will be built uh, already. Construction goes full speed, 40 meter, and the company which built it for uh, Thailand uh, in Chiang Mai, uh, they, they decided to give a bonus to radio astronomers to build 13 meter next to this 40 meter for free, just a bonus, just gesture, wow. <laughs> and it's very similar to our situation, we have 30 meter and 12 meter and uh, they will have 40 meter and 13 meter. Very nice for geology, for astronomy, So this is just one area in Japan and Korea and China uh, and now Thailand runs radio astronomical countries. And here I found in Nature Astronomy uh, uh, VLDI networks in Northern Hemisphere. VLDI stands for Very Long Baseline Interferometry when uh, we connect virtually radio telescopes. Virtually, I mean not with wi wire. Uh, but with, uh, you just record separately data and then bring them to correlate or correlate and get images, get uh, astrometric information and so on. Uh, so for example, East Asian VLDI network 21 telescope, which consists of the 6, 11 and 4, in some it is 21, and EVN European VLDI network 27 telescopes, and United States, uh, uh, very long baseline array, uh, 10 telescopes plus Northern Hemisphere telescope arrays such as GMRT, Giant Meter Radio Telescope in India, JVLA in the United States, John Smith, very long uh, large array, uh, LOFA in the Netherlands, China in Canada, EMER in, in uh, Great Britain, uh, W. SRT, which is Western Rock Computers Radio Telescope in the Netherlands, plus uh, uh, single dish antennas, 100 meter and bigger, uh, fast, of course, it's 500 meter diameter, I see, but 300 meters, maybe, maybe I have to have pictures, pictures, pictures here, they're all beautiful, but later. Uh, GBT, Green Band Telescope, 100 meter, Ethelsberg, 100 meter, Rattan, uh, 600, uh, uh, where the six meter telescope in Northern Caucasus, 600 meter, but it is very clever one. It is uh, like, uh, represents 600 meter dish, but it is just one belt of this dish, which is sitting on the ground. Very clever. Um, oops, I put something wrong here. Yeah, this is just Northern, the Northern Hemisphere, and if we go to the southern hemisphere, we, we have long baseline array, uh, which consists of radio telescopes in Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa. We work uh, well, sort of routinely as part of this uh, array. OSCOPE is uh, geodetic, very good uh, array of telescopes, network of telescopes, which consists of three radio telescopes in Australia, across the Australian continent in Hobart, Kestin, Yaragadi, and <coughs> one walkers in the field we work together. African LDI network ADN is now uh, in the state of setting. ALMA, uh, that's in Chile, we will talk about it. Uh, SKA, 
the pathfinders can erase such a SASCAP MW emergency white field array near CAT in um, South Africa and global geodetic field, uh, VLBI network, uh, <coughs> space VLBI, VSOP, uh, uh, Japanese radio strong Russian, and more hopefully in the future. And this is one of uh, pathfinders, uh, Australian escape pathfinder. Uh, just three dishes are visible, but in total 36 dishes, and a lot of people welcoming us. And here is very, what makes it very special. Uh, this is focal plane array, which consists of 188 elements. And together, they provide very uh, high angular resolution view simultaneously of 30 degrees on the sky. And all astronomers understand what this <coughs> is. This is just incredible, amazing, impossible, but this is a technique. And Australians now are just pioneers, the first in the world in this. Was, Netherlands was very really good, now Australia is number one. Uh, and this is counting down to the launch of ASCAP 36 dishes full survey science. And step one. Bring it between all antennas, 36 antennas, and they have to find the resonance when when you have one wave re recorded in one antenna, one dish, the same way recorded on another dish, but because uh, you know they are misplaced, you know, in different uh, location, uh, you need to bring together these uh, waves. So they coincide exactly, and when they exactly coincide, you have a resonance, you have fringe, we call it our fringe. So they cut fringes between antennas, one and two, one and three, one and four, one and blah, 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 one and 36, two and three, two and four, two and five, blah, 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 blah two and 36, three, and so on. And they, they did it, this is the first step. And then there will be more steps to make it working. And it happened the 6th of April, three days ago. Congratulations, Oscar team. We had uh, uh, two people here, uh, uh, more, more than two, last month, oh, in February now, uh, escape conference. And this, this is how it looks like. <laughs> 36 uh, handshake, people handshake. Uh, it means 300 and uh, 630 handshake baselines and fringes. This resonance in each of them. This is how they look like. These fringes, and it shows like 23 and 32, 23 and 33, 23 and 34, and so on and so on. <coughs> SKA will have. Uh, 200 dishes. And this step of having fringes between each to make sure that all this works in one way, uh, it is uh, proportional to number squared. So can you imagine this matrix uh, like uh, 50 times bigger for uh, SK uh, phase one, which will be built in uh, South Africa in South Africa, also dishes, 200 dishes. We will come to it later. And this is where these fringes, they get these fringes. This is 40 um, uh, supercomputing center in uh, uh, Perth. And they are with computers where they do this job. And also in the same area, they have Murchison White Field Array, which is prototype of low frequency. That's because not about dishes, but about uh, this kind of uh, 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 dipoles and uh, antennas, so to say. And there will be altogether 4,096 antennas like this, interconnected and working together in one, one telescope. Uh, will not will be the run already that it is built. Uh, in SKA, we will deal with hundreds, thousands of them. So it will be much bigger. I will 
always refer to as K. And the same as with ASCAP, which operates 36 dishes, they will be filled of your 30 degrees. So uh, you can see, where is the moon here? They pretend that this is the moon. Okay, maybe. Yeah, so half a degree, but here is 30 degrees. And resolution, uh, simultaneous image with highest angular resolution, more details. You can zoom, 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 zoom. You, you can see all the integrity you know, things. And yeah, huge area. Uh, what does it say? That's from presentation by Melanie Johnson Hollis uh, in February here. OK, that's very important information. And this is classic <laughs> science, uh, epochal realization, polarimetry, galaxies. Uh, what is this? Space debris uh, um, mm -hmm. and uh, near Earth objects, exoplanets, pulsars, transients, cosmic wave clusters, uh, galaxies, blah, blah, blah. everything. It covers everything. And it is past kind of escape. There will be escape, but uh, 100 times bigger. Wow. Um, that's where it is located first in Jerome Dawn and the machine uh, observatory, radio astronomical observatory. Uh, this is very interesting. In the same area, this little thing is standing. Here's a bottle of water someone just put for scale. Okay, so you understand how small it is. And this is mesh surrounding it, and it did just revolution. I hope. I'm not sure, and no one is sure, but everyone keeps fingers crossed and hopes that it is done. Uh, uh, let me explain. It is about epoch of realization. So uh, this is typical picture. Big Bang happened, everything started expanding, uh, and here we are after almost 13.8 billion years from the Big Bang. And this is what we see from this place. This is uh, when uh, the matter, before the matter was ionized, it was plasma, like fire, not transparent, and then recombination happened, and everything became very dark, uh, became neutral, neutral gas. Plasma, it's beautiful, everyone likes looking at fire, fireplace, that was before, and this is what we see, this uh, baryonic acoustic oscillations with the uh, LANC or MW map, uh, or WW map. Uh, but after that, it was dark ages. Nothing, no stars, no galaxies. Uh, and everything neutral and cold and uh, warm. <coughs> and then finally first stars started uh, Forming. And what happened? This star started ionizing gas around itself. And this gas from neutral became ionized again. And for ionized again, we use this term re ionized, re ionization. Uh, here is this period of dark ages, and then first stars, first black holes. And SKA hopefully will make this kind of movie going to change in frequency and going through different periods of time and making tomography of this epoch of realization. Uh, and it was a challenge to find this signature of epoch of realization. This is frequency. This is uh, brightness. Uh, we measure it in Kelvin or millikelvin. Here, like 100, 150 millikelvin, which is 0.1 Kelvin. Uh, that's what is expected. And people knew about it. That, that's, it, it, it is all ruled by this hyperfine st structure transition in hydrogen, 21 centimeter, and we know all about it. Since I found papers explaining all this and, and explaining the depths of this uh, signature, this uh, spectral line, so to say, since beginning of 60s, can you imagine? And then people refine it again and again and again using this 
thin temperature, temperature of uh, 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 background radiation, and all, all these kind of things. And they always came to the same result, uh, 100 millikelvin or 0.1 Kelvin. And here's some theory, and uh, blah, 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 <laughs> and uh, don't worry about it. And this thing managed to find the signature. And they published this paper, absorption profile centered at uh, 78 megahertz in the sky, all sky average spectrum. And here it is. And it is in the right uh, right redshift and frequency, 78 um, uh, megahertz. Uh, but look here, in Kelvin. So where is our 0.1 Kelvin that we expected? It is here. We expected something like this. But they found this. Half a Kelvin. That's no one expected. That's amazing. And, of course, the first reaction would be, Oh, come on. Uh, I probably won't believe it. Unless, if, if, if I didn't see this name, our goals. This is just number one spectroscopy, radio spectroscopy in the world. Two different basic things. If, uh, you know, we talk about some extreme <laughs> observation, that's our goals. Uh, for example, he discovered this uh, deuterium hyperfine. So number one in the world, and his name is here. So people are very serious about this. And other try to repeat it, but very difficult to get rid of, you know, the RF fine and so on. But that place in uh, Murchison is very special, very low RF fine. Um, and how to explain this? And here came immediately theoretical paper in the same issue of nature, uh, one paper after another, bumper to bumper, and uh, this one explains it. We know all the theory, we know exactly what supposed to be this uh, intensity of this line. 0.1 Kelvin, why 0.5? You need some extra agent that interacts with matter. And this paper indicates this is the dark matter. But we think that always the dark matter doesn't interact with ordinary baryonic matter. But here suggestion is that if we allow dark matter to weakly interact with baryonic matter, then we can have exactly this depth of this signal. Um, but it has huge consequences. Remember that famous and well-established Lambda C D M model of the universe. Lambda stands for lambda term of Einstein, which means dark energy. C D M stands for cold dark matter. But here it means warm dark matter. So uh, if it is con confirmed, then many things will be reconsidered. Another fantastic thing that's happening these days event horizon telescope and this is location of this event horizon telescopes uh, from uh, South Pole telescope to you know Hawaii and Alma and the United States and Europe network of radio telescopes uh, sub millimeter radio telescope with uh, high frequency uh, radio telescopes uh, and uh, in two days time April the 10th uh, actually, don't miss it. It will be 1 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, which is 1 a.m. here on, on Thursday early morning. It will be a uh, press conference uh, simultaneously in several places, in uh, Washington, in uh, Brussels, in Santiago, Shanghai, Taipei, and Tokyo. How about that? All astronomers will watch. And what they're going to show us, they're going to show us a picture. That was the paper of 2000. 
of these three authors, one from Germany and two from the uh, United States, who suggested that, hey guys, look, uh, if we go to uh, high, fre high frequency submillimeters uh, range, uh, we can reach very high angular resolution and we can get image of, wow, of the event horizon of the black hole in the middle of the Milky Way. Uh, and they write here, it is year 2000, that in recent years, evidence for existence of ultra compact concentration of dark, uh, dark max, dark max, okay, associated with the radio source Sagittarius A star galactic center has become very strong. Uh, 2000, you know, they just started looking after, the, in infrared, after these orbits of stars around the center of the Milky Way galaxy around this supermassive black hole. Now we have uh, one full orbit, I think, and several, you know, uh, like half orbits. So we can precisely say that yes, there is the supermassive black hole, four million solar masses and so on, but here, uh, the, however, unambiguous proof uh, that this object is indeed a black hole is still lacking. Uh, and uh, a decimeter is black hole is the event horizon. To a distant observer, the event horizon casts a relatively large shadow with an apparent diameter of 10 gravitational radii and so on. So they gave this theoretical uh, uh, description and compute, compute it. Uh, and this is if the black hole is rotating, you would see this. Uh, this depending on orientation of accretion disk because there is a black hole and if accretion disk is like that and you look to the black hole like that, you, you would see this. But if accretion disk slightly uh, shadows the black hole, the event horizon, you would see it slightly shifted and uh, uh, not with full beauty, but actually the accretion disk can be in the galactic plane, they, then we would see not much. And we will know about it at 1 a.m. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is rotating, fast rotating uh, black hole. This is what we expect, but this is black hole without rotation. Still, maybe something can be visible. So this uh, people, thanks to them, uh, there was a huge push to bring together a array of sub-millimeter uh, radio telescopes and make them work together. And uh, they uh, finished their observations in 2017. Then there was almost half a year delay because they couldn't get uh, uh, disks from Antarctica delivered. And then they started uh, you know, putting it correlating things and then they looked theoretically and so on, and there was embargo on information. And finally, uh, it will be this week, we will know. And we will see the first image of, hopefully, the black hole. Yeah, that's how it would look like, without Alma, with Alma. Uh, this is another fantastic thing. That's uh, CHIME, Canadian Hydrogen Density Mapping Experiment in Canada. Uh, they, oh, they, this is um, 20 meters, yeah, 20 meters, and, and, and this length is 100 meters. So quite, quite big cylinders. Um, and very clever e equipment, electronic equipment, uh, which allows to deal with a millisecond time scale. They can <coughs> register fast radio bursts. Before they started working, we knew something like uh, 15 fast radio bursts, and 14 of them were observed in Barth's observatory. Uh, and no one, well, people believed, yes, but, uh, and uh, their first announcement, they announced 16, and uh, there was one repeating, and now we have second repeating fast radio burst. What it is, no one knows. Uh, there are many hypotheses, one of them is Magnetar, but clearly they are extragalactic 
maybe this is some kind of illumination that uh, city, uh, you know, uh, they uh, make the sky beautiful. Maybe they have, instead of eyes invisible, they have antennas in radio, and they can see the solar radio beauty of the universe, and they illuminate the sky. I don't know. Uh, one, one of our PhD students in Italia, two months, she works on this fast radio bursts. And actually, on Wednesday, there will be her PhD presentation, so please welcome to AUT to listen about it. Um, right, uh, so now they say that, uh, like, especially between each other, uh, whisper to each other that they already have five computers repeating fast radio bursts uh, and about 200 other discoveries. And we expect like 3,000 fast radio bursts per night per sky if we have proper equipment and SKA will be one of these proper uh, telescopes for this. Uh, this is, uh, I don't know why I put it, oh, this. This is Wormless. Uh, this is a geodetic network of radio <coughs> telescopes, and you can see uh, that the Northern Hemisphere land and land, and a lot of telescopes, and uh, <laughs> CCC here, and not many radio telescopes, and other, our radio telescope is very important for Southern Hemisphere. Uh, that's a very interesting tendency we have, um, uh, conversion of antennas, and there are several antennas which were converted from telecommunications dishes to radio telescopes, and this is our Wokler's first slide on the 4th of July, 2014. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, South Africa identified, I have here five pictures, but seven radio telescopes, and uh, one of them in Kenya uh, already kind of working, we, I keep bombarding them and saying, hey, let's do VLDI. But they, um, probably not everything is ready there for this high level of radio astronomy that we, we can do. Ah, 10 fast, 500 meters, China, incredible, incredible. That's natural depression here in this landscape. <laughs> Look at the landscape. Whew. Uh, actually, uh, it has effective diameter. Uh, the effective illuminated aperture is 300 meter. Uh, at zenith distance, uh, less than uh, 26 degrees. So the zenith distance, 26 degrees. In, in this area from the zenith, you, you can operate with this telescope and it would be equivalent to 300. Uh, and uh, up to a zenith distance, 60 degrees of effective uh, illuminated aperture reduced to 200 meters, so it works this way. But it can cover quite a lot of the sky, thanks to rotation curves and its first location. See? And space radio astronomy, uh, space VLDI, uh, this is VSOP, Japanese uh, probe, and they <coughs> worked on VSOP too, but then something with money, money, money is very important. Of course, um, yeah, uh, we, we didn't work with VSOP, right, Tim? I don't think we observed it or uh, participated, but we participated with this Radio Strong Space uh, Observatory. Um, how many meters? Is it 11? No, 10 meters diameter radio telescope, and very interesting. The idea was everyone was against, but the Prime designer uh, uh, Nikolai Kardashev, he, he insisted that it should have a very elongated body, and it had. It had uh, 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 the uh, large, semi, uh, large axis of 330, 340,000 kilometers. Basically, it went close to the Earth and then <coughs> very high up to the moon, and then again close to the Earth. And uh, well, I, I can show it not correctly according to Kepler's law. It should go very fast here. And then it just stops here, almost stops, and it takes one week, and then it has to be very fast. And we, we, we worked with them. We were one of uh, the ground stations. So our signal was correlated with it, and uh, they will be 
unfortunately, it stopped working. There was lost communication with it. So it works, but communication was lost, and no one knows why. I should start looking at time, because I have so much to say. Uh, that's other radio telescopes, of course. This is all radio astronomy. Um, and uh, WMAP uh, has frequencies from 40 gigahertz to 87 gigahertz, and Planck uh, has low frequency from uh, the same 40 to 80, and then from 100 to 800 gigahertz, and they got this map of uh, uh, babylonic acoustic oscillations, um, <coughs> cosmic microwave background radiation. Um, right, SK, scientific impacts of new telescopes which improves observation of surface by at least an order of magnitude are hard to predict. Yeah, well, exactly. That's what happened with Galileo and from just uh, human eye to small spy glass and so many discoveries, revolution in science. And it was a uh, factor of 100 between collectionary of eye and spy glass. And the same thing we will have with SK. We, I mean the world, Hard to predict. I don't remember who said that. Someone very clever. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Great observatories uh, for coming decay. That's uh, uh, several. <laughs> well, 30 meter telescope, uh, one of them, and uh, square kilometer array in the next decay, and James Webb telescope, 6.5 years, and uh, Atacama, and this one. Something happens with it. Um, actually, they just keep postponing the newest information, is, uh, which I got from Wikipedia. The launch uh, is planned for Mar 30th of March 2021. Mm -hmm. And uh, initially, it's supposed to be in 2019, so two, two years delay. And the cost raises from, uh, you know, from this to this. OK, anyway. So it's all normal. Uh, and, the, uh, and this is ALMA, and it keeps producing these uh, uh, protoplanetary disks. Very interesting. This is called science already. A lot of statistics about it. And uh, I, I was on a conference, International Astronomical Union, and uh, there were so many uh, talks uh, ex explaining some details of all these protoplanetary disks. Amazing. Uh, this is an ALMA correlator. Uh, this is correlator of GI, that's where uh, geodetic data are correlated, and our 12 meter telescope is uh, very efficient in uh, space geography area. Uh, finally, SK is great kilometer array, three sides, and two, uh, which means two telescopes and headquarters, and it's all one observatory. Uh, on the 12th of March, it was signed the uh, agreement between uh, eight countries participated. New Zealand supposed to be there, but our government recently decided that we are not going to go for full uh, membership in SK. Uh, associate, no one knows what associate means. It's a little bit uh, strange and uh, disappointing, but well, okay. Uh, but SK will be built. No, no doubt in it. All these pathfinders start working and producing fantastic results, and uh, this is a matter of scale now. Um, right, 600 scientists and engineers. Phase one construction will continue for five, six years from 2020. Uh, 2020. And uh, I, uh, it, it is realistic. Yes, indeed, it will start about here. Construction cost is this. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, that's two sites in Australia. <coughs> we talked about it, and this is in Africa. Uh, here will be 200 dishes, 215 meter dishes across 150 kilometers area. That's first stage of the scale. Uh, st stage two will be 10 times bigger. Stage one is just 10% of the scale. And here, 130,000 antennas. Remember that past finder 
4,096 antennas. Here we talk about 130,000, and that's how it comes. So this is one antenna. There will be stations consisting each of 256 antennas like this, and there will be 512 stations like this one. That's SK1 only. SK2 supposed to be 10 times bigger. Uh, yeah, and this is uh, antennas for uh, SK mid in Africa. Uh, there will be, I, I told already, so 133 15 meter dishes and 64 13.5 meter dishes. This is more correct. Yeah. Uh, this is a scale one image quality. We can already uh, model it in computer. This is what comes from OPA in the Netherlands. It's working. This is not working yet, but this is what expected quality of image. I think this Craig Nebula is it? And this is one of galaxies. Of That's what comes from ELA in the United States. Dirty image. Uh, this is SK big questions, including uh, uh, cradle of life and origin of cosmic magnetism. I love it; it's beautiful. And uh, neutral hydrogen, which is epoch of uh, epoch of realization, is here. Exact energy and many other things. Uh, there are uh, uh, specialized experiments, including optics, infrared. And they work for some some of these questions. Uh, well, will work. They are planning to, to be created, and they some of them may 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 reach some very important results. Here, for example, Euclid and cosmologists wait for Euclid, but uh, it will be launched 2021. But I think it's now delayed again. And this large uh, synopsis survey telescope, 8 meter diameter, uh, first light is planned for uh, 2019. Now they change to 2020, begin survey in 2022. So well, hopefully it will, will be there. They, they, they are much, well, the same actually cost as SK1. 750 SK1, 650 million. Okay. And this is something very interesting. That United States are pushing this new project. A rare telescopes, uh, similar to SK, but high frequency. Uh, the bridge between SK and ALMA. ALMA is very high frequency. This is something between. So this is beautiful. This is not competition. This is about, OK, you see these colors like reddish, and you see this bluish, and how about between? We want to see also yellow and green and all other colors. So this just gives more and more information. And we all want uh, United States to get money for this project. The next generation, very large array. I won't click on this movie. Uh, uh, they, they already go very fast. They have. Uh, they have workshops, they have the book, science book published, huge one, and some some other meeting. This is science book, 90 chapters, uh, 285 authors. I hope that it will be built, but much later than SK, of course, uh, science-wise papers. Okay, um, right. I, I think I should go a little bit faster. Uh, it bridges the gap between ALMA and SK1. Uh, this is sensitivity of it if it is built, and SK1 is kind of uh, dwarf. Here, SK1 low, uh, that's very important. But if we want to go to SK2, I need to squash it because SK2 sensitivity will be beyond the screen. Uh, maybe I will skip many things. Um, I want to say that um, we currently work uh, SK and VLBI synthesis. 
like SPA in South Africa. Plus, how about we use other radio telescopes around the world and bring information together and synthesize, and there will be much higher resolution, there will be some, some advances of this. So we work on it, and there is very interesting science here. And one of part of this science is major astronomy, and I hope that we will start doing major astronomy and astronomy in waters as well. Uh, that's uh, uh, the parallaxes of, um, of major sources. With VLBI, oh, thank you. They give a little bit of air. Oh, now I can survive another five minutes. <laughs> With VLBI, we can precisely measure positions with very high precision, like 10 micro seconds or 3 micro seconds uh, with SK. Um, and determine uh, parallaxes of major sources across the galaxy. And in radio, we see through the whole um, galaxy disk because it is transparent to radio waves. So we can map the, the 3D uh, structure of the galaxy with five of arms. Mm -hmm. And uh, this galaxy looks like ours with the, the bar in the center and spiral waves. And this is uh, uh, from one of uh, recent papers of Mark Reed. He was here and uh, he involves us in, um, in observations in southern sky, our observatory. And this is what he did in northern sky. He traced with uh, major sources the spiral arms. <laughs> and I asked him, uh, where is the error bar? He said it is smaller than the dots. So accuracy is fantastic. Uh, of course, they are sc scattered because the spiral arm is quite wide. But uh, he needs the southern hemisphere observations, which will provide this part of okay. it. And also, he manages to determine galactic rotation curve using very far, you know, going go pretty far with major sources and tracing it here. Uh, SK LBI plus Gaia can be a very, very good and beneficial guide will provide a billion stellar parallaxes. And here is the first attempt, attempt to combine this major parallaxes along the spiral arms and some Gaia data which are not uh, yet quite refined. The guy continues working on it. Because parallax, it is, you, you do observations now, and then you need to wait half a year when you go around, you know, on the opposite side of the Earth's orbit around the sun and the observations again. So it is a long story doing parallaxes. Yeah, so this is where we can continue. Southern Hemisphere. I, yeah, and just a few final slides. Uh, this is the International Astronomical Union uh, centenary, centenary 100 years. Uh, and uh, I think John Fanshaw is in Brussels already to celebrate 100 years. He's vice president of the International Astronomical Union. Uh, um, yeah, this is from the website, the logo of this 100 years of the sky. Uh, and I thought that this is very interesting, uh, 1919, but next I would put 2020. And instead of going like centuries, I would go century plus one year, like uh, sunspot cycle, not 10 years, not decade, but 11 years. So here you have beautiful numbers, in 15 to 1616. And I started writing here, maybe some students would uh, create more information, put more information here, 1617, 17. And we have all these things. And 17, 18, 18, probably I need to work on it, but it's important, <laughs> important that spectroscopy and transdotal lines and uh, William Herschel and his optical telescope. And here, of course, was fantastic a photography of John Herschel, son of William Herschel, and stellar parallaxes and discovery of Neptune, Einstein's special general relativity, CPs, uh, can be at a uh, limit. Uh, 
1908, uh, HR diagram. And here we have, uh, let me just go through this line by line. Uh, IU was founded. Arthur Eddington, 1919 Solar Eclipse Expedition, Hubble's Law, Radio Astronomy, uh, Bolden and Stanley here in New Zealand, first cross identification of radio sources, 21 minute aligned, discovery of Milky Way Galaxy. I just, in general, we started understanding the spiral arms and the size and the shape of the galaxy. Uh, heroic 60s, equator, CMB, molecular mazes, radio combination lines, pulsars. Then understanding stars and stellar evolution. This is all this century. Uh, nuclear synthesis, uh, all connected with it. Big Bang and modern cosmology. Space flights, multi-wave length astronomy, neutrino, gravitational waves, fast radio bursts, dark matter, dark energy, exoplanets. <laughs> <laughs> this is so great to be an astronomer. And uh, 2020 to 2121. SKA and hopefully new generation, uh, new generation VLA and from Lambda CDM we will question Lambda do we have dark energy really? There are some theories which show that maybe not. Cold, maybe warm. Inflation, uh, we will have a network of pulses which will get gravitational waves coming directly from inflation and we will test inflation for the first time. Naked singularity, water fast radio burst, SETI, uh, CETI, and uh, uh, epoch organization tomography that all comes from SK and probably others. And LISA will be in this period and uh, other telescopes and so on. Wow. And this is again back to this website of 100 years of International Astronomical Union. And guess what they have here on this uh, front page of this website? They have this. <laughs> and you know why? Because we live in the golden age of radio astronomy. Thank you. <laughs> It was very good opportunity for relatively small money. And when on 12th of March, these eight ambassadors were standing in Rome, it was signed, signed, signed on behalf of these eight countries in Rome, and there was no money <laughs> yeah, Very sad. Big. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Okay, let's 
wait for A few aren't any questions, maybe you'd still like to ask yeah. Sergey afterwards. We can adjourn for supper, but before we do that, I'd like to um, let Sergey some oh, of the things oh, from the side of his back Thank you. That's very nice. <laughs> Golden age continues. <laughs> yes, indeed.